actually, I'm kind of curious if the, the channels are now empty. I'm sure they must be, because there's no reason why you'd be able to choose uh, between them. Oh, the blood guy is still there. Don't make me... Yep. Totally blank. Yep. <clears throat> but at least the doctor's stuck by it. Does he have a name, or is he just the doctor? I think that he has a name, but I don't remember what it is. Yeah, this is, uh... I think that the Killer 7 have already been disbanded at this point, but this is sort of like Amir's, uh simultaneously recollecting the destruction of the Union 7, which was his initiation into the Syndicate. And at the same time, this is Garcian's erasure of that. So in the process of erasing his initiation into the Syndicate, he's also erasing the Syndicate. Which is why you see, like here, you see Kevin as the uh, bellhop or the doorman. And I believe the bellhopper doorman in this instance was that wasn't um, that wasn't Edo McAllister, but he was one of the Union Seven in disguise. Yeah. So you're saying that the that you think these these scenes are not flashbacks per se; they're more like they're more rooted in the present than in the past, actually, because they're the process that Garcino is going through right now. They just happen to be sort of. Yeah, I think the reiterations of, I mean, he's he's representing the process to himself in the way that he eliminated the Union Seven. Yeah, yeah, this is it's the process by which Amir Parkreiner eliminated the Union Seven, and it's also the process right now by which Garcian is erasing the Killer Seven, mm. which he gained by destroying the Union Seven. So it's kind of like, um, I don't know, you might think of it as like going over a spot on the wall with paint in black and then coming along and going over it again with white so you you yeah. effectively erase it but you're doing the same motion yeah and it's like Khan had a Union Jack on there. But yeah, I think in that instance, uh, he had killed... Um, yeah, so to illustrate, it's not that he had killed Khan there, but he was able to... He killed one of the Union Seven in such a way that uh, he was... He managed to take advantage of his distraction because of music. So when it comes to some of the Killer Seven who give Garcia a little bit more trouble in those scenes, like Coyote, are we assuming that the Union Seven would have given him similar yeah. resistance, or just that this is a different scene playing itself out? Yeah, I think that it's... I don't think that it's... Huh. You know, it might not be that it's guaranteed that these are the specific actions or the yeah. specific means by which he killed the Union 7, but this is the way it's being re-represented by a way of sort of like... I think in a way it's kind of like claiming supremacy over the Killer 7 in terms of what they're best at, because there, you know, he yes. was able to ironically creep up on uh, Khan, and Khan didn't hear him. Uh, here, mask strength doesn't matter. But I mean, he's he's putting the Killer Seven into the same rooms where he killed the Union Seven, but not the same scenes exactly. So, yeah. so I mean, there the, it's still reflective of each Killer Seven of each persona's own sort of character in a sense, how they're responding to him and what kind of resistance they're giving and not giving. Yeah. Oh, weird. I thought that he threw. 
for some reason I thought that he had thrown the uh, hair dryer into the bathtub to kill Mask. I don't know why I thought that. Maybe I just put that together. Uh, so is that just incidental then, the hair dryer and the bathtub? Because that has nothing to do with that scene at all. Yeah, no, he totally just shot him up. Or, or what? Maybe that's a trace of the Union Seven murder. That's possible. That's one of the separations between the two. Yeah. Because yeah, it's like these are. It's a. It is something that's happening in real time, and it is. Uh, it has its own ways and means, independent of what happened in the past. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that it's interesting, like, as you go further up on the floors, the uh, Union 7 clearly hear the gunshots, and they get word, I presume, that, uh, that you know, they're being hunted. So they gradually start to flee and hide, which, you know, obviously wouldn't be the Killer 7 because they have, you know, the killers. Now that's also that's also kind of using Kaede's ability against her in a sense. Kaede being the one who is able to reveal hidden spaces. Yeah, that's true. And and this yeah. is a sort of a mundane twist on that idea, anyway. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I always kind of puzzled over what would be ironic about that, but <clears throat> that's totally it. Man, that is just, that is a sharp looking game right there. <laughs> I really like that there is like, there is sustained affection between Mills and Garcia. Like Mills seems to know what's going on, but he act, but he genuinely likes, uh, genuinely likes Garcia. And this is where it tries to, the game tries to sort of, rationalize out the uh, the process by which um, the conspiracy works out. I don't mean to be too down on the conspiracy element of it. I mean, it's obviously an important part of the game and what's going on, and it's also part of the political intrigue, but it seems like... I don't know, something's kind of putting me off about it this time through. What's putting you off about it? Uh, that's, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It, I guess because it feels like... I don't know. I kind of want to say it feels like a red herring, but then again, everything in the game is a red herring. And the significant parts of it is like... like the, the important thing is like the thematic... Uh, the thematic resonance. Right. It kind of hits at uh, Coyote's um, shooting style in that he, you know, kind of fires wildly. Yeah. 
Now, what would be ironic about this? Uh, that he Garcian uses cat cat burglar prowler uh, techniques okay. to get at yeah. the thief. I think this was the one... Yeah, this was... You found a soul shell over near the candles. I kind of want to say that that might be representative of, like, Coyotes and Coyotes' uh, affair. Because, like, they were lovers, supposedly. And... Uh, I don't know. It's easy, I, maybe that's uh, just pulling details and trying to match them up and generate mm. meaning. <clears throat> Which is to say I'm not committed to that. <coughs> I think Dan's is probably my favorite. There's a something that I had to watch this slow down to to catch, but um, to prepare our folks for it, if you look and see Dan's when when Garcian and Dan are standing there, like are are sitting at different sides of the table, or Dan is sitting down on a chair. That's right. Uh, Garcian beats him to the draw. Like Dan does not even get a shot off. Like, it's, it's often thought, based off the view of the scene, that uh, they shot at the same time and Garcian hits, but Dan uh, is completely beaten. Which, of course, is ironic, because he's the Hellion and, of course, the badass. <clears throat> And, the, right, this is where Travis was sitting. So, you must be the one they call the Bloody Heartland. You here to kill the Smiths, is that it? Rule of thumb, don't set your goals too high. What do you want? Who do you want, huh? You. Oh, no, he got his gun up, but didn't fire. Yeah. And it's also, I don't know, I under, as I understand it, uh, Garcian and the Smiths knew and recognized each other and had, you know, idiosyncratic relationships uh, and, and nuances between them. So, the... Uh, again, sort of conflating that this is something that's really happening, but it's also echoing a past event. The, the way that Dan doesn't recognize uh, Garcia in there, and actually refers to him as the Bloody Heartland, which is uh, Amir's nickname, not Garcia's, uh, is uh, sort of a recognition of the pastness of it, that that was the Union 7. That uh, it's simultaneously the Smiths and the Union Seven because the expression is one of unfamiliarity and only known by reputation. Uh, well, it's it's also what Garcia is doing by eliminating the Killer Seven in the present too. He's sort of re restoring himself as a mirror. Yeah, right? yeah. No, yeah, that's a good point. So, so in a sense, he's not Garcia as he's doing this. I also noticed that there's a degree of control that I've lost. Um, like, uh, the, I, I no longer can control which floor Garcian goes to, whereas before I had uh, control over the... Uh, mm -hmm. And you used to be able to choose directions in some of the hallways, too. Yeah, there are more... Whereas now, now it just takes you directly to the rooms and back. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's the last of Mills.
That's interesting, uh, this, the mention of tears. Uh, tears and sorrow are supposed to be the, uh, the sort of image associated with the smiles in the year, of, like a hundred years in the future. Yeah. This is Harmon and Kunlan. I still, I think that at this point, <clears throat> at this point, there is still a conflation between Harmon and Garcian. Like, even though the persona are no longer in him, or are at least being slowly bled out in a sense, I think the Harmon persona is still in there because he still has third eye. He hasn't destroyed it yet, so he still has that trace of Harmon in him. Which would explain why, when you open the door to Kunlan and, and Harmon, the spiritual the spiritual entities here in a bit, um, that they're killed with a you know with like a Chicago typewriter style Tommy gun, which is Young Harmon's uh, weapon of choice in Killer Eight, which is interesting because that's a that's a plot point that would be or the, a plot inference, rather, that would be completely opaque without having played Killer 8. That, I mean, you wouldn't know that that, that kind of gunfire signifies young Harmon. Naturally, I found myself being led to this place. Long journey, but it ends here, Garcian. No, I think it's time I called you by your real name. Amir Parkreiner. Amir? Allow me to introduce myself. My name's Harmon Smith. I'm the man you saw in your past. Do you remember the incident where six people were murdered in this hotel? You must have seen it yourself. Because you were the killer. The assassin, Amir Parkreiner, was the ace of aces. Who would have thought the killer was a mere 13 year old. It was a deliberate crime targeted toward the Smith Alliance. It consisted of seven members, but the leader wasn't included in the seven. Later investigations found his dead body inside a safe of a school. The investigative unit called them the Killer Seven. But the whole affair was never made public, not because this was an aberration from society, but because it involved national security issues. Unfortunately, a curse brought upon you by old tradition. You, Amir, are an assassin controlled by the government. Someone is watching your every move. From the second when I first took you in on the roof. You are one of the very few assassins with class, but you were out of control. Still, there was something venerable about you. Then it occurred to me, you were no longer a mortal being within you ever so quietly. Evil had opened its eyes. Yeah, and that's where you find out about Harmon being in the safe, where you find out about Harmon Smith as a spiritual entity having taken Amir in um, as a sort of... That's also, but the, I mean, you also get a sense that there is some... I mean that it's it's not just conflation when it comes to the deaths of the deaths of the killer seven throughout this section because uh, as young Herman explains it there the six murders that occurred in the hotel were targeted towards the Smith Alliance which I think that was also if I'm remembering this correctly that also is the name of um, that also was the name of the Union Seven. I think that there's like there's some overlap there. Oh really? Yeah. Because then you Although, also have the origin of the Killer Seven name whoa. there too. That the you know investigate investigators of the 
six murders in this hotel called them the victims, the Killer Seven. Right. Yeah, and that was kind of a nickname for a, kind of like a press nickname. Oh, no, not a press nickname, but... Oh, here we yeah. go. Here's the Forbidden Room. This is... Uh, this is the actual location. When you open that door in Garcian's trailer, uh, you access this room here. It, it's weird. It's like you open up that door in a trailer house in Seattle, and you access a penthouse suite in Philadelphia, which is kind of similar. Like when you go through the Vinculum Gate, you you're teleported to a to an island off the coast of Japan, and then back to um, uh, back to wherever. The, uh, hallway that you need to pass through is just in case the audio is skipping and we don't know